people say write what you know, I think it's more productive to think about that piece of writing advice as write what matters to you. If I look sweaty, it's because I am. Currently filming this in a house with no AC and it's extremely hot outside. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to come up with story ideas. This video is going to be more about ideation. I've made some other videos that focus on brainstorming once you actually have an idea. This video is gonna be focused on where to actually find that inspiration, how to help kickstart your ideation process. Hopefully this video will be helpful for anyone who has maybe taken a bit of a break from writing, if you're new to writing, maybe just the well has run dry. The first thing I wanna talk about is idea generators. If that works for you, great. Um, if you've never tried looking up writing prompts before, you can definitely try that. The thing with writing prompts though, many writers don't actually like writing prompts. And I think the reason that writing prompts don't work for all writers is because I think a huge part of writing is perseverance and <laughs> and a huge part of perseverance is maintaining your motivation. And a huge part of maintaining motivation is passion. A lot of the times if you're using a writing generator and it's, it's given you an idea that you think is interesting or that you think you can write, but isn't necessarily something that is that you're passionate about or that you feel is personal to you, that is a huge reason that writing prompts ultimately might not work for all writers. You might find yourself getting stuck in that idea, hitting a slump, or just not being motivated enough to continue writing it. I have personally been that way about writing prompts. You know, I tried to use them a lot when I was younger and I, I wanted to write, but I didn't feel like I had any cool ideas. So I think that is kind of the pitfall of writing generators. The best way to use them, I think, is almost similar to how I would recommend using something like a thesaurus. Whenever I use a thesaurus, I never use a word that I don't already know. If there's a word and I need a synonym for it, and let's say the word is soft, and I look up soft on thesaurus.com, when I'm looking through all of the options, I won't pick a word that I'm not already familiar with. I use it almost like a reminder. Like It's just like I'm having a brain fart, and I need to see all the different ways that you can use the word soft, but I would never pick a word that I haven't already seen or that I haven't already used because I want to use words that I'm already familiar with because I want to make sure that I'm using it correctly. I think the same thing with writing prompt generators. They can be a good starting point for you if you want to use them in a way that they're just kind of reminding you of something that you're already interested in. I think they can be helpful in that way. Before we go into some of my tips for ideation, I think it might be a good starting point to differentiate what an idea is versus what a premise is because I think a an idea can be one element of a story. I think a premise is made up of multiple ideas. Usually a premise will give you some kind of hint about who your character is, uh, what your world is, what conflict your character is facing in this world. The main thing to consider if you are struggling to come up with a story premise that interests you, brainstorming or just reflecting on what are the little ideas that you see in other stories that you are really drawn to? Like what kind of ideas, character tropes, worlds, themes, what kind of elements of story interest you as a writer and when you kind of turn those over in your head you'll eventually work towards coming up with premises that combine all of these multiple ideas that you as an individual find interesting. So yeah I think it's important for writers to eventually practice and hone this skill of uh, learning how to develop story premises. Not just how to come up with a story premise but also how to figure out which ones you think are worth writing. There will come a point where you will have a lot of story ideas that you find interesting, but if you are committed to actually writing that story and finishing that story, especially if it's a book, 
that is a time consuming process. And so there does reach a point where you have to sit down and decide this is the one that I'm going to write and I'm going to write it through to completion. And again, I think this goes back to motivation and passion, like which story ideas are you really passionate enough to see through to the end? So when you're thinking about developing a premise, I think, like I said, it comes down to the elements of character world and conflict as well as theme. But I I think that a lot of thematic writing isn't necessarily something that you have to put in a premise, it can come up organically as you're brainstorming or even as you're writing. So I won't touch upon too much like thematic writing in this video. One thing that I will recommend if you've never tried it before is before you start writing an idea, try to write out what your premise is in a short blurb or in a log line style. So this is something that I do before I start writing any book, before I even start brainstorming a book. You don't have to outline your story. You don't have to know anything about the scenes or anything like that. Going through the exercise of trying to distill whatever story you're trying to write, uh, trying to distill that in a one to two sentence pitch, I think helps a lot with knowing what the focus of your story is and also how interesting it sounds when you summarize it. It's kind of like giving yourself a goal or an objective before you start writing, which is not to say that you can't or that you shouldn't discovery write. If you find yourself struggling to finish your stories because you don't do any upfront brainstorming, I think at least trying to summarize your story in one sentence could help with at least like giving you a goal post for your story. To practice developing a compelling premise, I would actually recommend Googling logline examples if you've never done that before. These are used most often in film TV, but I think they can be a great practice for writers as well, especially if you get to a point where you want to query your book, you're gonna have to like talk about your story at some point if publication is something that you're interested in. So learning how to hone this skill early on can be great. Having a quick and snappy pitch, it's gonna be so good to like have that on hand for anything that you write, especially when you get to a point where you're pitching your book to agents, editors, readers. So anyways, to go back to what I said earlier about how premises are often a combination of many ideas. So for example, the first book that I ever, ever finished writing, it was a YA fantasy. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you probably remember it. The ideas that inspired that book, I wanted to write a book about a translator kind of character. I also wanted her to be sort of a failed chosen one, a bit of a subversion on a chosen one trope. Um, I also knew that I wanted to write an ensemble cast and I wanted it to be a secondary world, high fantasy that is very focused on court politics. So those were the ideas that were really interesting to me at the time as a writer. So I basically developed a premise around that. But all of those elements in and of themselves are not it's, it's not a premise, it's just a bunch of ideas. When I was figuring out what did I actually want the story to be about, the premise of the book became an exiled mage, once used by the crown as a weapon of war, is released from her prison sentence early under the condition that she first accompany the prince, his restless right-hand swordsman, and conflicted knight as a translator to facilitate peace talks between the nations of their empire, but a new war maybe brewing on the horizon before she has the chance to earn her freedom. The premise is messy because the book is messy, <laughs> but bear with me. It was the first book I ever finished writing, okay? I think I developed it when I was like 18. If I was pitching this book now, I would workshop that premise, but you can see how it actually hints at a plot. If you are trying to come up with a log line, you can try using this formula of character idea, setting, and conflict. Now I wanna kinda get into some tips how to kickstart your brainstorming. For me, a lot of ideation is just like collecting little ideas until I start to see a plot or a premise. I think that a lot of this exercise, I guess, is very contingent on trying to be a little bit self-reflective in your own interests. So if you're struggling to figure out what it is you want to write, start with who you are as a consumer of media. What do you like to read? What do you like to watch? What are your favorite 
pieces of media why are they your favorite like why do they feel so important to you it's a great practice as a writer to consume media widely and consciously and to take note of what are your hyper fixations write things down if you have to i use my notes app a lot like i have such a chaotic notes app because <laughs> inspiration is in everything and the thing that i want to stress in this video is that nothing is too small or too dumb too ridiculous to be considered inspiration like i think a lot of the time we can get very caught up in in things like is this a meaningful story like does this story that i want to write feel important enough i want to write a story that's deep and profound and all these things i just don't think that you need to necessarily feel think about that when you're super early on in your brainstorming process in order to come up with good story ideas and the reason i put good in quotation marks is because a good story idea really at its core just comes down to what story idea do you love so much that it feels like only you can write this or it feels like i won't rest until i write this i think in order to write with passion in order to write authentically and honestly you have to put your shame and insecurities away and remind yourself that no one is going to read the story until you are ready for them to read it. Don't be, don't like self reject ideas because you think that other people won't like them, you know? On that note, I think it really helps to also consider what you don't like in stories. If you are reading a book, if you're watching a show or a movie and you're like, this is boring, I don't like this plot. It helps to ask yourself why, what are the elements that are making this story boring for you? For me, if I've watched something, especially something that I don't like, I feel like I have this compulsion to figure out not only what it is that I don't like about the story, but how I would improve it if I was writing the same idea. And, and when I say how I would improve it, obviously I mean like, how would I change this story based on my own subjective opinions and own subjective understandings of what makes a good story. But in general, I just like to pull apart all of the media that I consume, whether I liked it or not, so that I can study its parts and learn from them. The exercise of like trying to break down what it is I didn't like is still valuable because then I can sort of avoid it in my own writing. And I think those kinds of like visceral reactions and having that kind of critical engagement with the work helps you develop your gut instinct as a writer you so that you have your own personal instinct for what is good and what is bad to you that experience as a whole really helps writers develop their voice and their style the other piece of advice i would like to give about story ideas is genuinely just talk to people i think curiosity is something that is very beneficial be genuinely curious about other people so much of writing and especially character writing is about getting in people's heads and um that curiosity and desire to understand the full spectrum of human experiences human emotions really helps your characters feel more lived in i'm actually super interested in writing about law for one of my next projects and it's like a very specific type of law that i'm interested in there's like a contemporary fantasy book that i want to write and part of what ignited my interest in this particular law practice is that i have a very close friend who is a lawyer in this field when i interviewed her about her job you know i said from the outset i was like i don't have a plot yet but i could be very inspired by you and your work and so she knows that up front and she is like very happy to talk to me about law she lit i like asked her for readings and she like literally sent me stuff from like her law school readings and you know even if i don't end up writing that story or even if i only end up taking a small percentage of what of what i actually learn from her to me it's not wasted time finally the last thing that i want to talk about is consider your personal experience we all know the writing advice write what you know there's a lot of talk about how is it bad to self-insert self-inserting is super cringy all this kind of stuff and i think a lot of people who take issue with the writing advice write what you know um, we'll typically have a rebuttal. Well, you don't need to have lived something in order to write it. Is 
True. But to me, when I think about this piece of writing advice, writing what you know goes beyond just surface level. It doesn't mean that because I am a doctor or because I went through med school, I should write about the medical field. Writing what you know can also mean write your anxieties, write your insecurities, write about your passions. If you're a speculative fiction writer, for example, and there's like a magical allegory that you come up with that is like a vehicle for any of those things, then find a way to explore that. This is a side tangent, but I've been watching, or I just finished watching Interview with a Vampire. Even though those books are literally about vampires, the character of Claudia, for example, and the arc of her character is directly inspired by Anne Rice's experience of having a young daughter who had battled leukemia. The meditations that that story makes on parenting and loss and grief and the vampirism is just a tool to explore these very honest very human experiences and in a way personal experiences for the author you know whenever i talk about my cyberpunk book local heavens and whenever people ask me you know what was the inspiration how did it come about i usually always talk about it in the sense of like where i was in my life and how i was feeling at the time that i decided to pursue that story idea so for me it was like during the pandemic as I graduated from university and into a terrible job market. And again, it was 2020. I, like a lot of people, was doing a lot of you know self-reflection on the kind of brokenness of our social systems. I think that everyone has something valuable to bring to a story. Like personal experience goes beyond just like your occupation or one specific event in your life. When people say write what you know, I think it's more productive to think about that piece of writing advice as write what matters to you, write the kinds of messages that you want to put out into the world, you know, whether that's messy female characters or queer joy or using humor as as a vehicle to grapple with tough themes like death and grief or anxiety. These sorts of things come from the sum of our lived experiences. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope this discussion was helpful. And yeah, if you guys have any tips for how do you come up with your story ideas? Where do they come from? How does inspiration strike? feel free to share down below. As always, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. You can also support me over on Ko-fi through one-time donations or by joining my monthly memberships if you're interested in seeing what kind of extra stuff I offer at each tier. I will link it down below. I hope all your writing projects are going well and I'll see you guys in the next video.